Hello and welcome to KD News where I show you a bunch of merge requests and then I actually explain to you a bit of the code that's underneath them so you can actually start developing too for KD or whatever if you're interested in that. So let's go through all of the merge requests so you can see what's new and then we'll also dive into the code later. This is the first one which is very simple. You take Discover and right now Discover has lots of full width cars. With this merge request, the cards are actually split into two columns, which is pretty nice to have. In this merge request, which is about the system tray, if you're on tablet mode, then the icons will actually become a bit bigger, so they're easier to touch and with more spacing between each other. And of course, if you click like within an icon or the next one, the icon, uh, sorry, the click gets redirected to the closest icon so that you can actually click whenever and the spacing actually helps. In this case, K command bar is uh, that bar that appears if you click, uh, I forgot about the exact shortcut, I think it's like Alt Shift L, and it's like a bit runner, but for singular, for applications, if you take Dolphin as an example, you will see something like this with all of the actions. And thanks to this merge request, now it will appear to the top attached uh, to the title bar as if it was like a real key runner, but for the application, which is very nice. Then there is this, which is make up, uh, up delegate icons less enormous. So if you see this, they're pretty big, all of the icons. Now they have a more appropriate size and uh, they breathe a bit more. There's more margin, which is nice. Here, I choose the simplest one, the, mer the simplest merge request, so you can actually understand the code fully. In this one, so as you know, if you right click on the desktop, there's lots of actions and uh, there's work on going to try to remove some of them, maybe the less useful. And in this case, the activities menu from the context menu will disappear if you're not actually using activities. So the default menu will be a bit smaller by default. In here, the removing message is more instructional in the sense that if you're transferring files to the USB stick you have in your computer and uh, those files are being transferred and you click on the unmount button, then you will see don't unplug yet, files are still being transferred, which is pretty useful not to actually lose any file. In this case, well, you know how applications in the uh, task manager can show to you a bunch of, you know, uh, the number of uh, notifications they have as an example, Telegram desktop does this. Well, now the actual icon will be a bit prettier because it will follow the icon, sorry. I meant uh, the notification, uh, the number of notifications will be a bit prettier because it will actually follow the new breeze uh, blue ocean style that we've developed. And lastly, of course, I didn't want to zoom in this much. Lastly, if you're using a Kurgami app and there's a context menu, that context menu will become a bit bigger if you're into tablet mode, which is pretty useful. Now let's see how, how these are actually done. So first of all, this one. Now it's very easy even looking at the patch to guess how it's done. You've got the context menu and there's probably a QML element which is called menu. And inside of it, there are all of the menu items and there's probably a spacing or a height, and now it's bigger on tablet mode. If you go see the code, then we've got menu item.qml, which is, well, the QML file that represents that menu item. And you've got here vertical padding, and the vertical padding of each menu item, instead of being four, is now see if tablet mode is on, and if so, it's eight, otherwise four. Same here, the preferred height of the elements is if we are on tablet mode, then it's a small medium, which is in between from small to medium uh, icon size. Otherwise, it's small, pretty easy. Next one, blue ocean style. This is another QML change and we've got this badge.qml and in here, we've got a rectangle. So the badge is actually a rectangle. It doesn't look like one, but that's because it's actually rounded. It's a rounded rectangle. And now we say, okay, we read the color called highlight color from the plasma theme, okay? And then this, we say the color of the rectangle is that color, but with 0 0.3 opacity. So transparent, makes sense. And then we say the border color is that color as well without the transparency, so it's actually opaque. 
And then we say that the width of the border is, uh, well, it depends on the pixel ratio, but it's probably, I don't know, one, two by default. And uh, we don't need anymore to use the highlighted text color, which was the wrong one, really. Now we just read the color, the highlight color, and we set it. Very easy. Next one. This is make removing message more instructional. And this is done by A, creating a timer. So a timer is just a thing that counts time. In this case, one second, 1000 milliseconds, so one second. And it doesn't repeat. So you start it and it counts one second and it's like, okay, I'm done. You start it, it's called restart, but it's actually use it to start it as well. Whenever you're actually unmounting something, and then here, which if we go see is, where is it? The subtitle for, you know, the actual element in the list. The subtitle is, if the timer is running, which means if it has been less than one second since we last pressed unmount, then it's called removing. Otherwise it's called don't unplug yet. Files are still being transferred. So basically we're saying, if um, it has been less than one second since we last click on amount, then you show this, otherwise this. Pretty easy. Next, this one, we see that first of all, it imports this library in the CMake list, uh, not library, especially pronounced like that, but it's a framework. It's uh, one of KDE's framework. KDE has a lot of frameworks. Some are, some are very related to KDE, so activities is a good example. Some are like about translation, 18N is translation. In this case, the activity framework is used to actually know if, uh, well, there is at least one, at least two activities. And what we do is that if we're adding an icon whose name is manage, manage activities, then if activities, activities, which is the list of activity, an array, length is one, then you return a null pointer, so you don't actually do anything. Otherwise, it goes on and it reaches this line where you actually add an action, manage activities. Pretty straightforward. This one. Of course, you need to know where to edit to actually add these things, but well, it's a good first step to actually understand what's going on, and then you will be sooner or later able to actually do the, those things yourselves. This one is making the app delegate icons less enormous. So as before, we're, we're expecting some changes in QML so that the margin is smaller. And that's it. So we've got left margin, which is um, a property of the item app icon, pretty straightforward. And the left margin is if we're compact, a large spacing, otherwise double that spacing. And in here, what was grid unit multiplied by three is now icon size is large. What was grid unit uh, multiplied by five is icon size is huge. Now, of course, to understand this, you need to understand that icon size is large is bigger than grid unit multiplied by three, and icon size is huge is bigger than grid unit multiplied by five, but it's not like I know those values by heart either. You can just look them up. And in here, the left margin of the element, let's see, container for everything but the icon, the app icon, so the text in the card, well, double the spacing, pretty easy. This one, this one is slightly more tough, so it's C++, let me enlarge this a bit. There was this function which disappeared, uh, it was called update view geometry, but now there's a new one called show. What's going on? So you create a rectangle called parent geometry. So the geometry is actual, the, the actually, sorry, position and size of something. So we're trying to build a geometry for the key command bar based on the geometry of the parent, which in this case is the actual window calling the key command bar. This bunch of code, I, go, I won't go through it, but is to actually read what's the geometry of the parent and then math. We set with a minimum width and minimum height to 500 and 250 hard coded values. The maximum width is the width of the parent geometry, which makes sense. You want to be larger compared to the parent. The maximum height is the height of the parent geometry, straightforward. The preferred width, the one we'd like to use, is the max width divided by, divided by 2.4, and the max height is the height of the parent divided by two. 
So you take a window, you make it 2.4 uh, times smaller, two times smaller, and that's it, you've got it. Then you create a size, which is hopefully the preferred height, but if it's too big, then you go with the max width, and if it's too, mo too small, you go with the minimum width, step forward, you set that size, and then you also make a position, which is uh, you take the geometry of uh, the parent window, you take the center, you take the X coordinate, and you subtract the width divided by two, so you actually go left and you're centered. If you know a bit of math, this is really easy. And we also take just uh, the Y coordinate of the parent, so we're on the top. And then we create a pop-up in that position. Next one, tablet mode for the, for the system tray. So you can see that this uh, merge request actually adds another option in system tray settings, which is panel icon spacing. By default, it's normal, and you can also make it larger if you want. But if you're on tablet mode, then this is large by default. And in here, panel icon size, you get to choose between small and scale with panel width. By default, it's small, but if you're on tablet mode, it will be scale with panel width, so it's actually bigger. So how is this done? So we are adding a new option. So there is a new entry into config main.xml and the new entry just says, okay, there's a new entry. It's called icon spacing. It's an integer and it's the spacing between icons. Straightforward. And then you actually add in config general.qml, which is the actual QML file to actually show you uh, that option. Well, you get a combo, combo box, which is the one that you use to choose the options with small, normal, and large. This is not very interesting. The interesting part is this one here. So the cell spacing, the spacing between the system tray icons is before it was just plasma core units, small spacing multiplied by two. Now it's uh, plasma core units, small spacing multiplied by, okay, check if we're in tablet mode. And if so, let's go with four actually. Otherwise you just choose plasmoid configuration icon spacing, which is the one that the user actually choose. Last one, this is the most complex one, but still it's QML. And uh, if you want to go through all of the merge requests, it's not that difficult to understand. Now it's 100 lines of change, but uh, really it's a bit straightforward. I won't go through all of it obviously, but I'll give you an idea. So we get a property ball featured, which is false. Now, what's the idea? We are trying to change how feature apps works. So we get a new property, which is called featured, that it is true if we are on the feature page and false if we are not. So if that featured uh, property is true, then you get the split view. Otherwise, it's just one line. Then what? You get that this element implicit height, so probably like the height of the cards, probably. You can see what a specific element is by, as an example, adding, adding a rectangle, a red rectangle with anchors fill parent, and then you'll see the rectangle and you'll go, ha, ah, it's that element. The implicit height goes from being six to four, depending on if you're on the feature page or not. In here, the container for everything but the app icon goes from being right, parent right, left. It's just fill the parent element as big as the parent element. Then you get a spacing, which is Kurigami units small spacing. You see these, uh, these are constants. So they say, okay, by default we use a small spacing, which uh, is, I don't know, two as an example. And by putting that into a variable, we can reuse that variable everywhere. And whenever we change something, it's changed there. And this spacing, which is the spacing between elements is between uh, a, a row, which is the container for the app name and the backend name labels. So you get, I don't know, probably the app icon could be also the app name for sure. And uh, the backend name label. So probably like flat pack, stuff like that. There is actually an icon, which is the app icon. And uh, all of these elements, by the way, are uh, spaced between each uh, themselves, sorry, by a small spacing. And uh, we get the icon of the app, which is called resource icon. We get it from application.icon, so the icon of the application, straightforward. And 
the height of the icon is grid units multiplied by three and the width is grid unit multiplied by three. Now I could go on and on. You need to go check out which element is which, but it's not that hard to do. And uh, there are even comments trying to explain. So it's very nice. And uh, that was it really. I hope that you learned something out of this video. Hopefully it was instructive to some extent. And uh, as you can see, a lot of uh, Plasma is actually QML stuff. And QML is not that hard to understand. You can, if you're interested in contributing to KDE, but also, I don't know, developing your own little project, use a bit of QML. Personally, I do use QML for my personal projects. And it's a handy little tool with some bugs sometimes, but I mean, all projects have bugs and sometimes QML make me go crazy, but Kitty Plasma makes a very good use of it and uh, it's very easy to to learn it. So if you're interested in contributing to Kitty, that's the best way to start really. See you tomorrow.